Hey guys, today I'm gonna talk about a good old friend. His name is Trey Van Cleve. And even when I started playing Magic in elementary school, I knew about Trey Van Cleve. He is one of the most famous cheaters, and he has the most famous photo of a Magic player cheating, where he looks, he clearly is looking at his opponent's hand when they're drafting which gives him a big advantage if he knows what his opponents are drafting and what colors they are picking he can easily avoid those colors and get past better cards so this guy has been cheating for over about 20 20 plus years now and it is not stopping the reason this is important is kind of a an email I received from a Channel Fireball writer. Uh, he used to write for Channel Fireball. And he had cheated at Magic. And there was a Reddit post about it. There was my YouTube video about it. And he wanted he wanted his name to be changed or something like that along the lines. Because he was looking for a job. And no one wanted to hire someone who was cheating at a collectible card game. And it was a very sad email because beyond magic, there is real life. And if you cheat, let's say you do some inside trading. That's not a joke. You are going to go to jail, even if you are very famous at making baking cookies. If you're Bernie Madoff, no matter how powerful you are, you will go to jail for Ponzi scheming everybody, including the charities. So things like stealing company supplies, cheating, you know, um, maybe making errors on your quote bonus. These things can get you not only fired, but go you could be sued or even thrown to jail. Uh, you could even be deported uh, for some from criminal acts, right? If you are not a U.S. citizen. So... When we talk about cheating and stealing and lying in real life, they, they have severe consequences. Uh, like someone who is cheating on his wife, he, the wife will eventually say no more. Uh, very similar to Frank and Melissa DeToro, but I don't think they were ever married. And that was probably the best Frank could ever do. So there are consequences in real life for cheating, lying, stealing manipulating things but in magic realm there are no consequences i will point blank tell you i've been playing this game for 20 years and what the only thing i really learned was if you cheat you can win i mean that's the grand takeaway if you need to win your f and m and you need and that 20 dollars of prize support really matters to you that's life or death for you because you need to buy that uh the twinkie so you can survive for that week Go for it, dude. Uh, go for it. I've seen so much cheating going on by the same people at the same card st stores that eventually I just don't go there anymore. Like the one card store that the there's a dude who... It's questionable whether or not he cheats, but he really enjoys winning. He's the dude who throws his deck at you, like at your general direction, so some cards just hit you if he loses. And then just leaves the store, and then the store manager, I guess, cleans up the mess. Trey is one of these people. I would never hire Trey for any business, as I'm a business owner. And one thing you have to know is if an employee steals from you, and you catch them stealing from you, they maybe stole an iPad pencil or something, they're going to steal eventually the iPad. And then your laptops. And... In their mind, what they're stealing is a laptop or 1500 Maybe they can pawn it off for $600. But that laptop has all your credit card information. It has all your client's credit card information. There's no way you can let a tray person into your company. Right? It, it doesn't make a... You have to do background checks. That's the bare necessity, the bare bones of what you should be doing. And you cannot allow trays, or in that case, the guy from Channel Fireball, the writer, the previous writer from Channel Fireball. It's sad to me that they don't live in reality until they are ostracized from the magic community and they realize, uh-oh, 
I need to get a real job. Oh man, whenever someone types in my name for my resume, it comes up that I cheated at this child's card game. So imagine that you are a business owner and any employee is going to have, you know, maybe they have to close up one night, they have a cash register if it's retail, and you go get a guy's resume and then you type it in and boom. The guy cheats at magic and he puts cards in his lap in case you want to know what that cheat was that he, that email was about. Would you trust this guy with your McDonald's? No, I would not. Would you trust this guy with your security firm? With customer passwords? Blank no. He's the dude, you know, we have all these like breaches. He's probably the dude selling the breaches to China or Russia, right? Would you trust this guy with your Facebook, your company, Facebook, or LinkedIn profile? Blank no. There are so many things that are wrong with the magic, some magic players mentality. They got to win all the time. This is not even like a PT. This is a PTQ. And he got caught cheating. And look at all these judges. Like they have to spend their time talking to him over and over again. Imagine... You know, the amount of judges that have to speak to this guy over the span of 20 years. People don't change unless there is a life-altering event. And those are very rare. Those are not common events. Somebody that does not go to bed one day and then wake up the next day and say, Oh, well, I'm, you know, now I'm ethically good. I'm not going to cheat at magic anymore. No. That doesn't happen. And the same with stealing, cheating, and lying. Um, I found via hiring a lot of people for my previous employer, which I was the legal counsel of, of a uh, pretty uh, medium-sized startup agency, that when you hire someone, they are who they are. And we had an excellent employee, and he stole money from petty cash. He kept stealing the petty cash. Uh, No matter how many times you tell him not to steal the petty cast, he would steal the petty cast, and then we had to let him go. There are people who are always late. Someone who is late to one meeting, one client meeting, they're going to be late for every client meeting. You cannot rely on them to be on time because they don't think there's a consequence to not being on time. Someone who's not professional will not be professional. You don't wake up one day and then become a totally different person. And the whole, you know, oh, I'm going to change day by day. I don't really believe in that. Like, I believe, like, if you go to jail, you really do change who you are because that's jail. And I know people have gone to jail and they have changed their behavior somewhat. But if you are Trey and you've been cheating and now you have a popular stream and every time you cheat, no one ever mentions it because you're political left-leaning, why would you stop cheating? Like, what is the incentive to stop cheating? There is none. Right? Trey doesn't have a real job. It's not like he's a chemist of some German company making chemicals. I mean, literally, like, let's say that you're a doctor or you're a chem... Like, in the case of uh, that dude in the MKM who cheated, he, he was a chemist from Germany. Maybe he worked for Bayer. Um, and let's say he was making aspirin. Well, what if there was an ingredient aspirin that he could resell for a lot of money or opiates, right? Maybe he was selling opiates to uh, druggies under the table to make magic card money. Who you are is who you've always been. And it is incredibly difficult to stop cheating and lying and stealing. When you open a business, within the first 90 days... That person's behavior, again, they're in best behavior because they're not an employee yet. They're on a trial basis, at least in my company, is going to dictate how they act two years from now, four years from now, five years from now. If they started day one stealing office supplies, what would change five years from now that would make them stop stealing office supplies or petty cash or fraudulent numbers? The same with cheating and magic. What in 10 years from now would stop this guy from cheating and magic? The answer is nothing. Like legitimately, 
there are no consequences to cheating and magic. It does not, it's so different from real life. You can, if you cheated or stole from your employer, you would be sued to oblivion and are in jail. Or even at a poker tournament. I mean, just consider a poker tournament where you have one player who is cheating all the time. Would we allow that player to come back? No, the casino would not allow that player to come back. And it might break his legs. I mean, depending on if you're like a, if the casino is owned by the mafia or something like that. No one likes a cheater except the Magic the Gathering community. Bye, guys.